Welcome back to Caffeine Confessionals. My name is Alan Aguirre, and we're here to talk about the challenge, Battle for a New Champion, episode 13. I'm joined by my lovely Vermontian co-host, Zoe Tromboli. Hi, everyone. Luke will be rejoining us next week. He has the week off this week. We're here to talk about Battle for a New Champion, episode 13. And guess what? Four straight weeks. We've gone between years. And still, nobody is getting eliminated from this show. It It's madness. It's just... It's a constant loop. It's a Groundhog Day. You have to wonder if there's a purge coming after this uh, chaos portion is over because, yeah, we're we're looking at the same faces for another week. It's funny too because like we we the season did start with a small cast. There's 24 people. It's been much less than it has in previous seasons where we've had 34, 36 people. So the fact we're down to 16 at this point in the season. It's not crazy when you have a season like Dirty 30 and Final Reckoning where they still had like 20 to 24 people at this point in the game. However, a lot of those people were a lot more charismatic than the 16 we have now. So it's a bit of a difference. Yeah, and there was so much going on in those seasons that nothing felt like a foregone conclusion. And the way that one alliance has been dominating this game so far, it feels like we kind of might know how things are going to go in the weeks to come um so people might think that we've been kind of just twiddling our thumbs for the last few weeks but i thought this was a great episode yeah and it, it, it was a good episode i agree with you um because we're we we're finally seeing the split in the house it's not just total one-on-one -on -one, like one side bullying obviously one side still has control of the game but we saw kylan horacio raven zara really come together and form their little anti you know, alliance group. They're trying to get all the underdogs together, try and make some moves. And it's actually been a while since we've seen this in a season. We've seen people get thrown in over and over again. But we haven't really seen, like, create a coalition and actually fight back, which is, it, it's a breath of fresh air. Yeah, I loved seeing them not only come together as, like, a strong core group, but start to rally some of the other people on the outside who are blind if they're not re ready to jump ship right now. Colleen is one of those people. We saw her all throughout the episode. We got a lot of Colleen this episode. Uh, we saw James get talked to. And it's interesting how everyone's games intertwined in different ways. And someone like Norris, where she cares a lot about Horacio, she cares a lot about Kylan, but she's been running with the Power Alliance this entire game and has been... One of their most one of the most important parts of that alliance. Yeah, I, I she did say that she and Jay have been friends for, for five years. Um, condolences to her, but I think that she is in the most challenging position in the house at this point by far. Colleen seems to know what she should do, but is just okay being disrespected <laughs> repeatedly. Um, and she has someone like Berna in her ear who is delusional. And I, I don't understand listening to Berna. Like, it's okay if you want to be friends with her, but you probably shouldn't listen to a word she says. <laughs> Berna is chaotic, and this is a complete tangent from what we're talking about. But uh, Olivia and Horacio have their own troubles in the house right now. Olivia is part of that major alliance. And you know Olivia's kind of going off the deep end when she's going to Berna, asking for reassurance at the beginning of this episode. Like, if that's the person you're, like, consoling to, inventing to, and trying to get, like, tell you that you're doing things right, that's just the wrong person to go to. So, as a girl, I think that she went to exactly the person she knew would tell her exactly what she wanted to hear in that <laughs> moment. Because I, you have friends who are, like, people that you will go to for advice who are going to give you good advice but not, maybe not the advice or perspective you want to hear and then you have friends who are just going to be like your hype man and tell you you're right and especially considering where Berna falls in the dynamics of this house and who she's aligned with and who she idolizes she, Olivia knew exactly what she was getting by having that conversation with Berna and she just wanted to feel better about it <laughs> Olivia's really fallen fall, like hard this season. 
I think, I mean, we'll get into it later, but just how she clearly has not talked to Horacio, but is talking to everyone else in the entire house about Horacio makes me lose respect for her just like as a person and as a friend. And I get we could be getting fed this weird edit. I get that. Maybe we'll find out when and then after the season's over and we get a reunion, we'll have some sort of idea of what actually happened. But what we're being shown right now, Olivia doesn't know how to be a friend to Horacio by actually communicating some of what's uncomfortable. I, yeah, people will always complain about the edit and it's like, oh, they didn't show this. Oh, they didn't show that. But someone who we haven't seen much of an edit of is Zara. But if you watch Zara in the background of scenes, oh, she's hanging out with this person. Oh, she's hanging out with this person. Where you could just see there's a bond there. Whereas Olivia, she's just talking about her Horacio and just looking at things from like afar. There's no, like if she was there with him all the time, talking to him, and then had these confessionals, then it would look like a weird edit. Yeah. And her point is that Horacio is not like making an effort to connect with her. But I, the impression I'm getting is Horacio is not making an effort to connect with most people in the house. He's just doing his own thing. So the fact that she's taking it so personally is really strange to me. Yeah, even at the beginning of the episode itself, Norris was very frustrated with Horacio in bed. Like, just talk to people. See, like, I want people to see the person that you are. And that's because she's just struggling with his lack of political gameplay when she is a fantastic social political player and she's handcuffed herself to him yeah she's gonna start going down with his ship because of her feelings for him and he's i i don't think that he doesn't care i think that it's just not in his wheelhouse to be able to be a chameleon in that way he also just has this idea of what the challenge is in his brain and it's I like Horacio. Eh, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with Horacio. I I think his image of the challenge is just not what I like in reality TV. It's the actual politicking. It's the making plays. It's the making big moves. And Horacio, he just all he cares about is actually competing in the challenges and the eliminations and finals, and that's it. Yeah, it's kind of like Landon, honestly. Although Landon would get into it with people because he had a temper, um, but. He, yeah, he just thinks that you're there to show that you, you are a solid physical competitor and a good person. And that's what he's trying to do, which is part of why people fell in love with him last season. Um, but when you're missing all those big personalities that we've grown to know and love over the years, it's not as charming. <laughs> and, I mean, it's also why the Daily Challenge turned out how it did where we're going to talk about it right now uh here's the basis of the daily challenge they got split into four teams of four uh three players had to go inside this giant tanker truck filled with water inside of that water there were little uh letter tiles they would then put those letter tiles up to a player who's standing on top of the tanker trunk give it to them that player would run across the trunk all the way to the back spell the word challenge champion with those letters um it was a pretty simple daily challenge. It, all it came down to who would get the letters the fastest and the quickest and who could traverse the truck in the most efficient way. Pretty simple. Yeah. And who could spell upside down and backwards. Exactly. <laughs> Horacio had no shot in this daily challenge because Michelle and Asaf were on his team and they decided, well, it's gonna probably going to be a guy's day. So let's throw this daily challenge to make sure he can't win because the whole house is politicking against him and Kylan. I think it shows just how, like, sweet-natured Horacio is that he didn't even really understand that they threw it. Like, he legitimately thought that they just... He was mad at them because he thought that they did poorly. Uh, everyone else watching knew what was going on, and Horacio just couldn't see it and was, like, disappointed in himself and thought he did something wrong when it was clearly his teammates completely sabotaging him. I felt so bad for him in that moment just because he was just not aware. And I can't take anything away from, like, Michelle and Asaf because that's, like, if that's their gameplay, that's their move, go for it. Good on them. Uh, Kylan did win either. Uh, he was on Emmanuel's team, I believe, and... They were at a direct disadvantage going first because I think every other team then adapted the strategies from there. And each team we saw go did progressively better besides the team that was throwing it. Uh, 
in the end, though, Ed absolutely crushed this daily challenge. Uh, he was teammates with Corey, Olivia, and a fourth person. Verna. Verna. Again. Uh, <laughs> they crushed this daily challenge. I really didn't have much thoughts about it other than they did very well. Yeah, and I think, honestly, it really came down to Ed. Because when he explained his strategy about having, like, numbers in letter positions, I was like, whatever, if that works for you, that's not how my brain works. But I do think that it's an indicator that he's really smart. Um, and I honestly looked at that team and I was like, I don't get the vibe that Olivia is the brightest bulb in the box. Berna doesn't, um, Berna, English isn't her first language. So like thinking about which letters have gone up versus what they need. And Corey's just Corey. Like, I just think he's kind of a dud half the time. So I was, I didn't have a lot of faith in that team, but their job inside that tinker was not hard, especially when you have Ed telling them exactly what he needs. I also wa- I was also wondering when watching the daily challenge itself, was there like a rule that you couldn't just throw pieces off the side of the truck? Because I would just be like, just give me as many letters as possible. I'm just gonna throw out the letters that I don't need. Just just hand them up to me. Because if they didn't weigh I, more than like a pound, like a half pound each. Yeah, I think even less than that. I was curious about that too. I was wondering why they weren't going flying, and I wondering if I think they were probably given the directive not to. Um, and they clearly had they could put them up on a platform outside of the little holes that they were coming out of yeah. and they weren't going to go anywhere. Um, and it looked like, actually, I think it was Ed's team that had a strategy, at least, that was putting on, like, one side the letters that they needed and one side the letters that they didn't. I think I saw Olivia doing that towards the end. Importantly, though, that's the team that got the win. Now they had to vote one guy. Ooh. Oh, I was just going to say, I'm so glad it wasn't Jay after his shenanigans, after they were done. He was so obnoxious. He uh, he might just be triggering for me because he reminds me of every, like, loser jock I went to high school with that, like, does the bare minimum and thinks that he's hot shit. Like, Jay, that wasn't hard what you were doing. You were attached with with a harness and you were just scurrying back and forth like the little rat that you are. Nothing <laughs> impressive. I'm I'm done on Jay, so that will come to light in this podcast. But I'm I'm done with Jay. I'm I'm just gonna hold words because I have I have Jay thoughts for later. But we're we're gonna get more into that. Uh, they come out of the daily challenge, and so they gotta vote someone into elimination. Uh, the obvious is gonna be either Kylan or Horacio, and Ed, Corey. They're very much on that, like, we got to throw in Horacio because he is very clearly our biggest threat in the final. Uh, Olivia, who's already been hesitant about all this stuff, she kind of just lets it happen. I mean, she fights for him, not really even at all. Yeah, she didn't, she didn't jump on the bandwagon, but she didn't defend him either. She just was like, well, you know, I can't do that, and I can't change your minds, I guess. So here we are. It is a sketchy moment to me because it's so easy to just be like, all right, let's throw in Kylan because Olivia doesn't owe much to Kylan. And then from there, you just let the house vote decide Horacio because that's what everyone wants anyway. That's what I was hoping that she was going to do. But like, hey, I don't want to be part of the people that are responsible for sending Horacio in. And we are not going to be able to vote for the house vote. So it would make me feel a lot more comfortable if we all said Kylan. And that way, I, I don't have to be part of Horacio going in. That would that would have been so easy for her to say. No, I will say, now that I think about it, and I take a step back, Norris is more of the question mark here. Because even though Norris does hold Kylan in high regard and is, like, very loyal to him, the difference between if she was fighting in a house vote for Kylan versus high, fighting in a house vote for Horacio, where she would have been politicking to every single person in the house, That's also kind of a big difference as well. Yeah, and maybe that's something that was left on the cutting room floor, that they wanted to take that decision out of uh, uh, Nerese's hands, which makes sense. The reaction, though, to Arasa getting voted in was, I think, interesting, where uh, Kylan, he just loves to be a little pot stir in these moments where he just goes, ah, all right, scared move, and it just... And Corey just blows up and says, I did the bravest thing in the entire house. Um. That The term brave is really interesting there. 
I and I think it's hilarious that people don't ever see what Kylan's doing. They like always take his bait, no matter what. He always has a little smirk too, where he's waiting. He's just you can see it in him, where he's waiting to see them blow up and react to what he's just said. Like he's detached his soul from his comment immediately, and now he's watching as a fan of the moment. Yeah, it's it's a really interesting dynamic. It he knows, I think, intellectually that it's not a scared move politically, but it absolutely is a scared move, which they openly said. They're, they are scared of him in a final, and they don't want to run against him in a final. And Kylan has watched enough of these seasons to know that you do want to get the really good people out before final. You don't need to be honorable and running against the best of the best. Like, it, the, the mission is to win. And if you want to run against, like, James and Berna and whoever, that is your prerogative and that's a smart move. It, it is a smart move to vote in Horacio. It just, it's, it undeniably is, but Corey calling it the bravest move, it's just, the word brave, wrong choice, hilarious moment. And I, I talked about, we talked about Raven a few weeks earlier. It's always great when people just don't roll over to someone getting voted in and there's actually like a reaction and there's fun and there's drama. And now that we have these two sides of the house and the alliances, like, I like them getting chippy. Me too. It's about damn time. It's we, we got a real season here going finally. It's like it's a it's like thirteen episodes. We got a real season here. As everyone started repeating almost every minute after this went down. Oh, the game started. The game started. I think at least seven different cast members said that, and Jay might have said it seventy times himself. But the game has started. Okay, so coming out of the Daily Challenge, obviously, um, there's the reaction to Olivia letting Horacio kind of just be the house vote into elimination. Uh, Olivia is trying to get affirmation from people that, like, oh, um, there's nothing you could have done. There's, you know, he's the one not talking to me. What should I do? And then Horacio is like, well, Olivia did let me go into elimination. I should probably go talk to her at some point in the night, see where we are. Um, and it, and it just, things blow up in, like, really weird ways where Norris takes this as her moment to go after Jay. Jay's trying to get in Olivia's ear. It's, I don't know. It was, it was a fascinating... I think that's why, that's why Norris did go after Jay. Jay was being really slimy in this whole club scenario. Like, getting in Olivia's head telling her that Horacio's not her friend. Even, like, I think he said to Norris at one point that, like, he doesn't care about her and, would, like, he, he wouldn't change the way he plays this game to support the way Norris is playing this game. And Norris is just having Horacio's back, just being like, we were all together. Horacio never did anything against any of you, and he's had more opportunities than all of you because he's won more than all of us. And he didn't do anything against you. And Olivia's just got, like, Jay, like, a little devil on her shoulder saying that, like, Horacio doesn't care about you. He doesn't have your back. He's never going to he's never gonna protect you when, like Nuri said, in reality, he has been protecting all of them by not going after any of them every time he's had the chance. Jay made a point that, like, he doesn't have any sway with anyone, but he, there was plenty of times he was paired with Zara for a win and wasn't doing what she wanted to do. Like, there they, he had chances, but he was aligned with them, and he, he didn't know that they were that they don't really like him anymore. Yeah, there was the moment like where Norris was talking to him in Spanish in that one boat when it came down between Melissa and someone else, and he stayed he stayed in line with their alliance. He did what Norris wanted because Horacio is loyal. He you know he can listen to that type of stuff. Before this moment even happened, it's also like important to note like we talked about Colleen earlier where Colleen had this scene with Jay where she's asking, okay, well, I'm basically considering flipping on this alliance because you guys put me at the bottom of the totem pole. And Jay says, well, look, if, if, the, if, if Raven and Zara lose, we're going to put them into elimination before you. And then Colleen asks, well, what if they win? And then Jay's like, well, shit, I guess you're going in. And then she's like, well, I don't want any of that. He's like, what can you offer me to show me that I'm not at the bottom? 
and he's just looking at her like blank face because he he can't offer anything because he's a slime ball who's made deals with everyone in the house. Yeah, I I think if he tried to say any that he was willing to put in any of the other girls over her, she would have seen right through it. I think the only name he could have offered her was Berna. That would have been a little bit believable. But I mean, I don't know what other way she could have a sign that she should not be doing what these people want anymore. Even if it's just to just to make a point and to screw them over, like do something. Because they don't care about you at all. <laughs> None of them. Not not at all. And it was just a telling sign too of like Jay looked like a deer in the headlights when she actually used reason and like just told the game to him out front. And he was just kind of hoping she would roll over because he had nothing to offer her and was just hoping that she would just be a sheep in that moment. Now, yeah, now, yeah, yeah. Fortunately, she, she did go bad, bad, bad a little bit later, but that's, you know. Uh, yeah, we'll get there. It does like transition though into like that Olivia stuff where he's badgering her like, you gotta trust me, this guy doesn't care about you. He's saying that to Norris. And then finally, we have a scene between uh, Horacio and Olivia where they're talking things out. And Olivia's like, Jay says I shouldn't trust you. Jay says this. And she's like, do you even have my back? And Horacio is like, have I, have I done anything in this game? Did I need to talk to you for you to know to trust me? Like, because my actions just speak louder than words. And that's the difference between Horacio and Jay. Whereas Jay is literally talking to a person like Colleen trying to promise her like the world when he has nothing to offer her, whereas Rossio doesn't need to say anything for there to be trust. He doesn't need that, re like the constant talking. I think this is where Olivia really got on my nerves too, because she did have that little conversation with Rossio and she has that moment where she's like, it's making me feel better, but I think it's just a little too late. And I'm like, how can you go through the conversation you just had with Jay, who just like reeks of total slime ball? who is just telling you all these things clearly to get you to do what he wants you to do, to have someone else in his camp that he feels he can manipulate. Like Jay, I don't think has many genuine bones in his body. And then have a conversation with Horacio, who's literally one of the most genuine people that's ever been on this show. You can take what he says at base value always, because he has shown that he will tell people what they don't want to hear, even if it's to his detriment. And like, still not be sure who is a better ally for you? Now, there's a, in terms of like, in your placement in this house, in this game, Horacio might not be the best ally because he's not in a good position. But in terms of who you can trust as a human being, it's very clear. It's also obvious why Jay didn't win Survivor in the scene because he just, it, it's just so hard to trust him. And it's also, this episode, I want to say, it's clear why Michelle won Survivor and Jay didn't, because yeah. she's just kind of cleaning up his messes, and she's just kind of watching him fall apart at the seams. Like, as you said, he keeps yelling, oh, the game has started, oh, I love this game type stuff, and it's just like panic is going through his head that now the game started, and she's just in total Survivor mode, trying to keep the alliance together. Yeah. Jay the next day after this whole club stuff I think if he wasn't like a balding Napoleon his behavior would have been labeled as a lot more aggressive because it was he was like really weird and making me uncomfortable <laughs> watching him because it, it it was just some for someone who's been in control of this game since the beginning it just showed clearly how he falls apart the second things are not going the way he wants them to. It's it's weird because he was very aggressive, yet also if anyone like reflected the same energy back, he was like, Oh, why are you so aggressive? Like he told he told Narice, like, I'm not it's like, are you gonna if you're gonna yell at me like this, I'm just gonna walk away. And it's like she was using Amanda Garcia's whispering voice when talking to him. Like it wasn't even like if you think that's yelling, that's just you literally not being able to deal with any form of confrontation. Because you might yeah, lose. She she was frustrated and like she was definitely raising her voice to like to a minimal degree, but she was emotional. Like she wasn't she wasn't being unreasonable. She wasn't being irrational. She was just like 
expressing her frustration in a totally appropriate way. I don't know how I feel about Jay. I don't, I just, I mean, slime ball is like the right way to describe it, but I think he is a, he's a fascinating character in this show's history where we've never seen, we've never seen a guy Jay's size be a top dog, a person running a challenge house. I think like the closest is maybe like Wes on Nexus 2 when like Wes was like very skinny. Um, but even then it's like he had the West mystique of being a two-time champion. Yeah. And his elimination wins and just like his general prowess in the game. Like he was good at all these things. Jay's benefiting from this lackluster male cast like dramatically. He has a bunch of meatheads basically following him and doing his bidding. And the only two men that really have their own head on their shoulders are Kyla and Horacio, which is why he's so threatened by them. It's tough because it's not even like the biggest like meathead dummy class. Because if there were, I would say bigger guys, they would just see Jay and be like, I can smash him in a pole wrestle and a hall brawl. I'm not going to listen to you. I'm just going to run you over. Because again, we've just never seen a guy who's like 150, 160 pounds run a challenge house. It's, it's weird. It's like, it's almost like a social experiment. <laughs> yeah. And I, maybe his, the whole, the hostility that he was giving to everyone after finding out that the few people that he is targeting are trying to rally votes to put on him is, it's just so strange. Like, what do you expect him to do? Just like lay down and take it? Like, are, are you that offended? Like, if anything, you should, you're putting these guys on the chopping block. What did you think that no one was going to see that it was you that was the, that was moving all the pieces on this chessboard? It, it, it didn't it's... feel, it, it just, it didn't feel like someone trying to make good TV. Because sometimes, like, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with people, like, having that reaction stirring the pot. This, to me, was just Jay. Not liking what was happening to him and showing who he is it was just it felt like total insecurity that's that's all yeah. it felt like um so there were 12 votes on the table we knew that Horacio, kylan zara and raven's votes were going towards jay um that meant they needed to flip three votes or two and maybe in a race burn uh so colleen was a crucial vote in this scenario where she needed to be with them and I feel like that should have been a lock vote, if anything. Uh, they then go to James, and Zara's been close with James the entire game. Uh, she tries to appeal to him, and James the whole season has been like, oh, I, I'm an alpha, I play my own game. Uh, it's international versus the U.S. house. And when Zara goes up to him, he's basically like, I got to ask Mariah, because she's the only re reason I'm in this game. Which I didn't know how to feel about, because it felt like, contradictory to who he's been this whole season at the same time mariah is why he's in the game so maybe being loyal to her is important this to me just was james not seeing the bigger picture so like yes mariah has you safer now but it's because we're at the point in the game that the other men realize they need to get kylan and horacio out because they're bigger threats than you so once they are out they're going to get you out. Or if they can't get them out, you're the next one on the chopping block. If Kyland and Horacio win, James, you're right back in the mix of this. So why wouldn't you take a shot at Jay? It's not like Mariah's not going to jump in your bed afterwards anyway. To me, this was almost Mariah's move to get her and James in a better spot together, where a few weeks ago, uh, Mariah's name had kind of went on the chopping block a little bit because like, oh, Mariah's patronizing too much with the international players. Uh, she doesn't care about her alliance. She sees Norris this week kind of fall down the pecking order of their alliance where because of her connection to Kyle and Horacio. And she's like, well, this is a great opportunity to get myself back in good standing and kind of play the middle where I'm not going to be targeted like Olivia and... Michelle will be as they're the clear head of the snake 
and I'm not going to get targeted like Norris or Zara and Raven. So I felt like this was a smart move by Mariah, not a smart move for James. Yeah, I agree. I, I think it will, it's, it could be an okay move for right now for James, but it's definitely not a good long-term move for him. Um, and Mariah, I still think the best thing that could happen to Mariah is James to leave, but. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't disagree with you at all. Um, it's a good move for her, though, because she's now very safely straddling the middle. In, or she's not even straddling the middle. She's part of an alliance, but she's not the target in the alliance, which is a great place to be. Especially with one with such big numbers. For sure. Uh, we then had the Kylan versus Jay moment where uh, Mariah and James, they go tell them about the plan to maybe throw him into elimination. And as they're actually as she's saying it, Colleen is there in the room with them. And Colleen's supposed to be part of that plan. Uh, and she's trying her best not to like reveal the cards. Uh, Jay goes out, talks to Kylan about it. And Kylan very clearly says, I never said your name before you said ours. It's pretty straightforward. To which Jay flips his lid, basically, and accuses Kylan of being an asshole and like all the other guys of being weak and him being able to tell people what to do and which clearly isn't the case because if that was the case, his name wouldn't be the one that's on the chopping block right now. It's so funny too because Kylan has been getting thrown in since literally week one, week two. And he continues to fight, he continues to compete. And Jay was just so pressed by his existence of him actually just playing the game. Uh, it reminds me, though, that last season we saw Jay win those two daily challenges and just implode. Because Jordan was poking at him, just destroying him from inside while, like, Jordan was potentially going into elimination. It feels the same way again this season. Yeah, and I, Kylan didn't even really do or say anything he just was like you said just willing to play the game and make try and make a move back in his direction i'm gonna have to watch it back again even though it makes me cringe watching it because it just it was so weird like you said he's just so insecure and maybe it's because he's aging like milk or maybe because it's 150 he's 150 pounds or maybe it's because whatever he knows that ct is still coming and he's gonna shit his pants like i don't know what it is that makes jay so insecure but it wasn't a good look did jay remind you of wes at all like in like because i i think of like not even good not even like the best west like wes when he's on a season like fresh meat too and he feels desperate and he's kind of spiraling and he knows his opportunity to win is like closing in on him. Yeah, the like chaotic West and Ev theatrics of that season. He was definitely giving me like bad villain vibes during this episode, which I could see that. I think because now with enough time, I see West as such a solid competitor. So even though he had those weird unhinged moments where he was had his back up against the wall and was lashing out in weird ways. Like, I don't see Wes as that person anymore, but in that season, in those moments, yeah, it definitely gives those vibes. Because Wes definitely had those, like, that stretch of seasons before he uh, won Rivals 2, where he was just kind of, like, desperate in the way he played yeah. the game. Like, he was always very much a beat my chest type guy while being very insecure. Yeah. Well, I mean, even you think back to the whole him pouring soda on Cara Maria. And I know that she was asking for it, like literally um, in that, in that season, but it was mean spirited and like nasty and and it just didn't make you like him. And that's Jay right now. And it's, it's especially weird because of the position Jay has in this house. 
if you guys are tired of us talking about Jay, sorry, we're gonna have to talk about him more right now. Because after this, we had another Jay scene where it's him and Norris uh, talking about what the game move is going to be. And I love this scene because his brain is melting as she's saying, well, you're my number one. Kylan's also a number one for me. I promise I wasn't going to say either of your guys' names. I'm in a tough situation. If I burn vote, then he just goes in. And look, just the concept that his name is even potentially on the table or he's not going to do, she's not going to do Jay's bidding, was just eating him up inside. Yeah, he was mad. You could tell he was fuming. And I think of particularly when she said, I'm Kylan's number one, but I'm not yours. Because, again, that's just logic. She's saying that there is not a single female in this house that Kylan would put over me, but I know you have at least one. So that, that's not a better move for me, necessarily. <sighs> Kylan, man. And not Kylan. Jay is just... He gets beat by logic so hard, he just doesn't know what to do with it. He just... Like you, you, it sucks when you get dealt the hand that you've been playing. Uh, there's no really way to way to describe it. I will say though, uh, Norris is kind of throwing away a very secure spot in this game for Kylan Horacio, and part because because she was a key part of that alliance. At one point, she said, "I've been a pawn in this alliance," and I completely disagree with that. I don't think you've been the queen. I think that's been Michelle. I think Michelle and Jay have been running stuff. Nerese has been like a, like a rook or a bishop. She's been crucial to them in this game. I just don't think she, I think I think the, the there's part of Nerese who loves reality TV and just doesn't like what their alliance is. Just doesn't like the vibes and just knows that like maybe even stirring the pot isn't the best for her game, but it's maybe the better TV move. I think also, in a way, she was blindsided by what happened this week because she really didn't know Horacio was going to go in. And now that Kylan's the other name on the table, they've definitely been leaving her out of these specific conversations. So I think that this this feels like a 180 to her on her two guys and where the other girls have a say over protecting their one or two guys. She's not she's realizing, oh, well. What I want is not as important to these people as them wanting to get out these two guys that are important to me. But the problem is, is the guys aren't as threatened by James and the other guys. Because and Jay is in control. So even if the other guys are threatened by Jay, which I can see him being a big threat in a final, but in a lot of things, he's not. He's just not going to be in as vulnerable, vulnerable as a position of a position. And she's got two guys that are like borderline social pariahs, but also huge physical threats. She's playing emotionally. She's playing strategically and she's playing for TV and she's trying to balance all three at the same time. You know who Nuri's kind of reminds me of right now? It's someone you like a lot. Nani? Nerese on this season reminds me a lot of Kayla on Dirty 30, where she's hitting this breaking point where Kayla was in an alliance with Cara, Maria, and Camilla. Uh, the vibes were off. Competitively, it wasn't good to have them in the game. And so Kayla made a move that was better for her game, but also was going to put her on the map reality TV-wise when she purged Cara. And that is what completely sent her on an upward trajectory in this like reality TV world. Like, just skyrocketed her. Norris is in a place right now where she can make some moves. Like, Horacio is her little... Uh, that, that, that's her Barbie beast. That's her Jenna, where she's playing emotionally with him. And maybe she can shake the table. Maybe she can move stuff. And, like, betraying that alliance, that, that fantastic floor she came in with, that would be a big move that could just skyrocket her, like, up the list. Yeah, I, I totally see it. I think I think what they have in common, too, is they're just, like, real people who, when they have a real feeling about something, are going to react to it. And she clearly cares about these guys and can, like, see all the things that are happening and see where her position in this house is. But she's not going to pretend like she's okay with it because she can't. 
I that's and that's what I love about Maurice. I know she has plenty of haters, but I think they're all losers. Um, she <laughs> she's a real person who has real reactions, and I think that's something we've been sorely missing in recent seasons, especially with newer people. I think that's also a reason that it's good to have MTV people on these shows because I think that they're better in terms of having like real authentic personalities. <laughs> I'm Team Nerese. Team Nerese, especially you put him in a room with Jay. Actually, you almost put almost anyone in a room with Jay at this point in the season, and just I'm gonna be team yeah. them. Just but especially lo- him and. Him- the shop should be locked in a closet together, and that would make it better for me personally. We then get to the deliberation, the vote in. Um, the four votes from Horacio, Kyland, Raven, Zara. They go to Jay. Um, they say a thing. That someone says, like, oh, well, I guess it's clear that Raven is on the other side now. No shit, dumbass. Like, could you not see from like the earlier scenes going on, like, just interactions in the house. Yeah, and also she's been your punching bag. Like this, is, like you can't be mad at her for this. You've all openly said in this episode over and over again that she is the only one that's getting voted in over Colleen. Like, what's the girl supposed to do? At, in that little Kylan J scene, where Raven was there, like defending Kylan, where it's like, well, you know, when you voted me in the third time, that really, that really stung. The third time really stung a bit. <laughs> The vote gets to the vote gets to Narice, and if I was Narice, I would have like found a way to wander to the end of the line to make sure I was the last vote. Um, she's there. She's trying to figure out what she should do, um, and she burns her vote on Emmanuel, which I don't hate because we've seen her be with Jay the entire game, um, but she's not voting Kylan at the same time. Do I wish she voted in Jay? Yeah, but I get why she didn't, especially after we had 12 weeks of, like, them building up a friendship and trust. Yeah, and even from an emotional standpoint, I definitely wanted her to vote in Jay, but you have Horacio sitting there telling her not to ruin her game, like, do what's best for your game. He's saying that to her over and over, do what's best for your game, do what's best for your game, and what's best for her game isn't to vote Jay at this point. Um... I absolutely wish she would have, but I get why she didn't. And it's not even that, like, if anything, Jay's actions this week maybe wanted, maybe made Maurice want to vote for Jay, but she's like, well, I'm, this this vote on Jay is also a vote on Michelle and Mariah and Corey, and, like, that just completely changed my relationship with all of them right now if I vote for Jay. So she burns on Emmanuel, uh, Colleen, then votes for uh, Kylan, which is very annoying. Um, and stupid. This is the one that I don't... She tried to say, like, it was going to put a target on her. Girl, they already told you a target is on you. Like, you are right on that chopping block with everybody else. So don't act like this is a smart game move for you. This this was a scared... You want to about a scared move? This was a scared move. Not only that, you have to know, since we've just had two female eliminations in a row, it's probably not going to be a male elimination again. And the male champ are going to come in, you throw in Jay, and there's a chance he could be gone. And that maybe if, if that person's gone, they're not coming back. Who gives a shit if you throw them in? If anything, too, just making that vote is you taking a stand and showing there's part of the house that will ride with you, that will protect you in that way. That's what matters, because... That group, might they might make a scared move and just toss you in because they're not even thinking in future weeks. Stand with people who will ride with you and be loyal to you and protect you. Draw the line in the sand. Plus, Because now, now all those people have no reason to protect you. You're just another name they can call out. Because And you're, they, it's almost you're harder to trust than the people that are on the opposite side. And even if you did make the vote, like, Raven and Zara are still going to be the bigger targets because they're just, they're bigger threats competitively. Definitely. It's it's annoying. Uh, I was disappointed by the move by Colleen. Um, she's trying to play both sides and just kind of be in the middle there, which it could work in some ways, but it's just, 
it, it's boring TV. It's boring gameplay. It's safe. Uh, James then rides the wave too, and he doesn't he doesn't flip sides at all. Which if she votes in J and he votes in J, then he could have just rode the middle in perfect fashion because they're still going to target Kylan and Horacio before him. Uh, the rest of the votes sweep towards Kylan. Kylan's going in. Yeah, and I don't know if anyone else caught this editing snafu, but I knew Kylan was going in before the deliberation because they showed them walking to the deliberation and Horacio and Kylan were wearing their elimination gear. So it was clearly them walking to elimination, but it was not that. And I caught that when that happened and I was like, oh, okay. I have to expect, I was like, is Kylan just showing up to the deliberation in his own elimination gear? And I was like, okay, no, that's not how it went. So even knowing how it was going to I was still frustrated. Kylan and Horacio going in. We go to the elimination arena. They bring out the mercenary. Uh, It's B-Rad. And... It's interesting, because the last time we saw Brad was on his, was at All-Stars where he was so stellar and so impressive and he comes out looking a little, a little ragged. The beard right. is not a good, but he, he was looking rough. We gotta, we gotta just confront this like first. We gotta just, we gotta acknowledge it. Brad was about 40 pounds lighter than the last time we saw him on all stars three. Um, the last time we saw him on all stars three, he was a Hulk of a man. Which we are calling like say, Bionic Brad. Yeah, Bionic Brad. Brad has always been like very under the radar, not as tall as you think. He's like five eight. Like he's very, but but because he's always been such a like a giant hulking man since he's returned, people don't really notice it. It was visible tonight because he had lost a lot of mass on his body. Um, if you don't follow Brad on social media. He had some really cryptic posts like four or five months ago where he was like maybe living in the woods and stuff and there's just there was some weird stuff going on. Um, I'm not going to make any suggestions as to what but obviously wasn't living the healthiest life and just things are going on. Um, But he deleted those posts. Um, I've heard a lot of people reached out and important to note him and his ex-wife Tori Hall uh, who famously, like, hate each other, like, bridges burn, slandered each other online for the last half decade. They follow each other on social media again and are decent terms where she reached out to him because she was really worried. And so I hear he's on a better path right now, but the Brad we saw come out is not the Brad we've been used to. Yeah, and I think he went to a Challenge Mania event recently in the last few months. So I'd be curious to hear from some people who went to that to see like how he looked. I think even the pictures from them from November, I think it was, he looked a lot better. Um, but I just had this immediate like pang of pity for, for him when I saw him on the show. And like we said before we started, like he clearly could have used that to ten thousand dollars in this elimination. He was struggling. It, it's such a curious pick by so I want to say this Brad is a great mercenary pick on paper when you're talking about a guy who's like he's beaten CT in elimination he's beaten Landon in elimination he's beaten Frank Sweeney in elimination the guy is a beast you know like five time finalist we've seen him do crazy things we just saw him kill all stars this version of Brad I MTV greenlighting him for this appearance is like a little bit weird especially when you have so many men who are very quick to accept a challenge call whenever. Derek. Derek, Nehemiah, Derek. literally, and literally any, there's there's 20 guys who've just done All-Stars who will fly in immediately. Like there's just, um, I'm happy to see Brad actually. And I'm like, I, I'm glad he's on a better path, but it was, uh, it was jarring. Yeah, I th- I think I would have been happier to see a, a Brad if he'd been in a better place. Like, we saw him on All-Stars. This just felt kind of sad. Um, but I don't know if, I like we know, Johnny Banana's supposed to come, and that might have left a Brad-sized hole in our lineup here. 
Um, it is what it is. And he just seems, I, I just, I can't say much about Brad. Cause I just like, I had, I had a lot of empathy for him when he was on the screen. Me too. And <laughs> It would have been better if he got like a scrub in these eliminations. Like if he had gotten just like one of the, like if he got in James and just got into, you know, beat the hell out of James in this elimination, that would have been fun. But instead he gets these two just really good competitors. Um, he two, pulls. And like the two, you can't find two people in the house that are more obsessed with working out at this point, I think, except for maybe Zara. Yeah. Like. <laughs> uh, Brad pulls the he does he does a double pull draw whatever it's called and it's Kylan's name comes out and Kylan gets to boost his stat basically Kylan gets to boost his resume and his stats in this moment. Uh, Horacio was like, damn, I wanted to compete in this elimination and I'm glad he didn't because I I would have felt bad for Brad. <laughs> it it would have been even worse. Yeah, and the elimination was a a cardio climbing elimination where there was a bunch of levels of stairs they had to move these wind panels move up and down, uh, transfer these balls from the bottom floor to the top floor, then a shoot. It's just one big, long cardio racing elimination. I believe the final score was Kylan won 10 to 6 in blowout fashion. Um, yeah. It was... It, like, the idea of lapping someone in an elimination like this is... Like, it. that's... Even just getting one or two full... Uh, laps ahead of someone on this elimination is a lot and Kylan did more than that which I think just shows Brad like very sweetly says like I'm not in my best shape I'm not having working out as much as I had at one point which was very clear um I think that Kylan presents more as even like a brawny person than like a cardio fiend and he just crushed him it's jarring too because I mean we did see like Brad on All Stars three like sprinting through mud pits, like just being one of the quickest. He's, he's a quick, agile guy historically, and Kylan just wiped the floor with him, and it was tough to see. And the crowd immediately was like, "Oh, Brad's getting his ass kicked." They were just because they cause yeah. they want Kylan out of the house, and it's just like it's over. Like within like ten seconds, they're like, "It's over." This guy, it's it, Brad's not even close. Yeah, I mean, part of it too is like age even if brad i think is still in his best shape i think it's tougher for a guy around 40 to be in an elimination like this no matter what kind of great shape you're in against like peak physical condition someone 30 versus 40 it's different but yeah kylan wins i'm happy for him great his stats are just looking really good at this point <laughs> It's it, it, like his elimination with Darrell technically wasn't close either because he won by like two extra uh, beams and whatever their game was doing. So he's not only beaten Darrell and Brad, he's done it by a decent margin. Um, if you're the rest of the house, you just got to be intimidated by this guy being so good. And Corey mentioned during the elimination, it wasn't just that like Kylan was like physically strong. It's that he had also had a strategy too when he was going where it's just like, man, this guy's smart. This guy's just a big threat. You got him, you got Horacio, like. I hope that this does a lot for Kylan's composure moving forward because I remember him in the elimination against Huey and he did not look composed at all. And now he's beaten two champs. So I really hope that this helps him not get frazzled moving forward because you know he's going to be in elimination again at some point. It's inevitable. So I hope that this gives him a lot of confidence in the game in, in this season and in future seasons. <laughs> God, nobody's fucking gone from this house. 16 people still. Um, it is interesting to think about, like, what would some of these eliminations have been if Horacio and Kylan had gone head-to-head -head against each other? Because that would have been a very good elimination. I mean, I'm still mad that week Devin came in and fucking picked Callum instead of Corey or Emmanuel. That would have been so much better for the season if one of those guys was gone right now. Yeah. Or a sock. But there are the Wabrowski's, so... The, oh, oh, I mean, there's the week where Jordan came in and he pulled Karen's name instead of a sock. If Jordan had just come in there and just trounced a sock like he would have, 
that would have been fun. Too. That would have been so much better for the season too, because hearing someone that wouldn't have just laid down. That's a much better season. Not that it's been bad. We've all agreed it's been good, but it would be cool for the guys on the opposite side of this alliance to have some more like depth. Save us, Kylan. Save us. Yeah, I'm really hoping for it. I was high on Kylan coming into the season just because I know that he's willing to actually play the game. So I'm always going to root for people that are willing to do anything at this point. That's why, like, Ed, Emmanuel, Asaf, Corey, just, like, floating along in the background is so annoying to me. I know that they're in a good position, but they're they're just so lame. <laughs> I Ed, I think, is like right now in the best position game wise out of anyone there. Because in these challenges, I think he looks just as good as Kylan and Horacio. Like he has just as many skills. He's a much better competitor than Jay. No, like no shade to Jay. I think I think Ed is much stronger than him, but he doesn't have to he doesn't have the target on him at all. And as I say this, I never want him on my TV screen again. <laughs> I, I agree. I he's just there's nothing there. He's in such a good spot to win. He's in such a good spot to win. And I'm, if he does, I'll be fucking pissed. <laughs> we, we have a tendency to get some lackluster winners, so it would track, honestly. But I'm with you. I don't want that to happen. There's too many people that would actually be something good for the challenge moving forward that Ed winning would feel so disappointing. <laughs> Good news is, CT is coming in next week. Um, freshly divorced, um, so uh, someone is gonna get their ass kicked. There's no way. There's no way we go five straight weeks with no one getting eliminated. So everyone, like, we're gonna get our most viewers of the season next week. CT is gonna come kick some weak guys' ass. Uh, I, I pray for that to happen. I'm really hoping it's Jay and he gets a little bit of revenge for that. Strikes the fear of God into him. Um, and based on the trailer for next week, it looks like, look, I'm not going to, I don't I don't know any spoilers, but based on the trailer for next week, it looks like Kylan and like Horacio maybe win the daily challenge. That's what they tease. Uh, I really hope that that's true. And it's, the mini, it's a mini final next week. It's a mini final. Whoever gets James, you're fucked. Everyone else has a chance. Oh my God. Yeah, I hope that, you know, we've been complaining about these teams all season. I hope it's Kylan, Horacio, Norris, and Zara on a team together for this mini final. Like, if they're not going to let them ever do a schoolyard pick, okay, fine, stack that team, and let's get the dub. I, I want to go back to CT for a second because I feel like in one of the trailers, there's a shot of CT holding that chaos club or whatever it is oh there is there is there's one that was 1000 percent in the trailers they've showed that so many times all season so i don't think that was just like a promo here ct hold this fun thing they i they have to get have gotten that shot from somewhere i am being so optimistic but i that's what i'm holding on to that i've seen that with my own two eyes ct's hulking frame with that club so ct getting chaos and as long as Jay's not on the winning team, let's make it happen, please. Imagine they give CT a headbanger. They're not going to do that. They're going to give him something, you know, something cool that CT will kick someone's ass in. God, just let him do not so fast again. <laughs> let him do the backpack. Oh, God. And literally anything. It's, it is. It's so unfair to give CT a physical elimination. But you want to talk about what the fans want? The fans want the backpack. Make another backpack. <laughs> so that, like, one day when he retires, you can literally give him a backpack and have two names sewn onto it. Like, please. Yeah, like the right and left cup holder that have the names right there. Oh. Oof. All right, well, that's our episode for this week. We're very excited for next week. Uh, make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube, iTunes, Twitter, Spotify. Um, 
Caffeine Confessionals. Have a great week, everyone. CT is coming next week. Get excited. Let's go.